Today on A Commonly Good MTG, we're playing a mono green money ball deck that is ready and raring to go for the rotation, which is in about one week from today. So if you like to just roll people over with cheap and effective green creatures, and you don't want to be bothered with understanding whether or not you can play this again or not next Wednesday, then this might just be the deck for you. Stay tuned to find out more. Hello and welcome to Uncommonly Good MTG. I'm your host, and remember, in the immortal words of His Holiness, the Buddha, the cow says, Moo! Dr. Yukon Sucket! Yes, thank you! Film before a live studio audience. Thank you so much! You can't suck it! Word to your mama. So I'm broadcasting to you today from my secret underground headquarters, and I'm bringing to you a deck I found over on Magic GG's traditional standard, what is it, Platinum and Mythic list, something like that. Yeah, and it was, uh, it's what I like to call a mono green money ball deck, because we're playing with a lot of creatures that are very well priced, like three mana and under, and yet have much better, uh, what am I trying to say, power facilities than you would expect normally, which is what green provides to you. Because if you can attack with three dudes, three mana, that's like nine turn. That's nine points per turn. And that is more than most people can hold up against. It's that sweet spot between paying a little bit, but getting a lot out of the deal. It's finding that value spot is what a money deck is all about. Money ball. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the cards in this deck. Oh, yeah, also, this is Rotation Proof, which is something I'm looking forward to. Rotation Proof. Next week, it's Rotation. That means that you'll be able to play this deck next Wednesday, next Thursday, Friday, without making any changes. All right, so what we're going to do is we're take a look at the cards in this deck. We're going to talk a little bit about how this deck should work, and then we're going to go out. We're going to crush some hopes and dreams. What do we got here? We got uh, a bunch of singletons, which is great single creatures. This guy comes out and explores, which means he puts out a, uh, what is it, a map token. This guy gets bigger for every guy that comes out with power greater than his own. So he's a grower. Uh, this allows you to actually kill other creatures and planeswalkers, which is great utility for green. Uh, you do it without sacrificing your It's not a fight. You just do that damage. So this is awesome. Uh, Gold Vein is in the vein of, of like the Shivan Devastator. You just, however much you pump into is how big he is. When he dies, you get that many treasure tokens. So he's going to help you mana ramp. You put three or four in there, that could easily get you up into these levels. He's really the guy that will get you there. Uh, Allo Alchemist. Um, potentially, you could use it to do a little bit of tricksy stuff. It's not too tricksy since you have to do it kind of at the speed of a sorcery at best. It's kind of slow, but otherwise you just get a dude out there. He's a good price, though. 3-2 for two. That's what we're looking for. 3-2 for two. That's what we're looking for. Plus, he allows you to destroy artifacts and enchantments. Uh, this gives you... Uh, I was surprised. I thought... I forgot that this was uh, not like in Kamigawa or something. So this is sticking around with us for at least another year. Maybe even longer. Uh, but anyways, it gives you guys... Uh, every time you put a plus one, plus one counter, a popo counter on something, you put an additional one on. And you could do it for two mana. You could put a popo counter on something, which means you're putting two popo counters on something. This guy gets a popo counter every time you cast another creature... If you have Ozilus, he gets two of them. And if he dies, you put those counters on other dudes you have. Uh, this one gets you mana if you plot it. This guy gets you a map token whenever it comes into the battlefield or tax, which allows you to essentially put popo counters and stuff. Or find lands. Uh, Plukanos is a... Look at He's a 4-5 for 3. Fantastic. Look at that. 4-5. Plus, if you got 6 mana and some life to sacrifice, you can turn him into a 6-6. Six, six. And when it dies, you turn into a bunch of three threes. Uh, fact, this guy, this guy is so excellent, and we need to be playing him more. Hasty, four four with death touch and an excellent ward for four. So four four for four with extra jive on there. Uh, this is where we start getting above the cost for a money ball deck. We got a railroad brawler for five, but he will make things so much better when you put him out because they get popo counters equal to their their power. If you have this out, then they get their power plus one in popo counters. 
Um, and then we got the Tyrannus Rex, which you'll probably never, ever, ever be able to play. But if you can get him out, man, he's a hasty 8-8 with Trample that, and Toxic 4. He's the devil incarnate. He's pretty excellent. Just so expensive at 7 for this deck. Two Merixes let you put out little babies. I don't know. Why not, right? And 21 lands, giving us a total of 23 lands to play with. But because we're doing a mono color, that's probably fine. All right, so that's it. What are we going to do with this deck? We're just going to be slamming creatures out. We're just going to be coming at them hardcore. We're trying to pump, 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 and kill them before he can do anything about it. Our sweet spot is mid-game. That's where we're going to have our opponent dead by. If we make it beyond that, we got to hope that we'll be able to get the mana to get into the big dudes. Because they got some chances here. These guys are nasty to deal with. But our mana base is a little tight. And if we can't get to it, then we'll be screwed. All right, so let's go out and do some damage. But before we do, let's do as we do every night. Let's say our prayers and talk about what is best in life. Hands together. Dear Black King Toxrel, who dwells within the dark chambers of my heart, please hear my prayers and grant your blessings as we attempt to crush our enemies, see them driven before us, and to hear the lamentations of the women. All right, we are playing against Cards Are Cringe. Two mana again. That is rough. Does this deck have very little mana or something? All right, let's lay it out there, Sergio. All right, so I can deal damage to Death Touch or just get rid of them. These things are possible. Oh, let's see. How are we going to get past this here? Let's just throw another dude out. The pump is on. No attacks. Eventually, we'll be able to take out uh, Nissa there. Or Titania. Alright, cool. Alright, I'll put out another dude. I can really do this guy? Oh, I got plot him, that's what I could do. We'll throw this guy out. Brings up the pump. Hard hitting question. He just takes it on the chin. It's good for you. Okay, I'm not worried about a 1 1. He doesn't seem to like my guys too much. I don't think he's going to attack. I mean, if he wants to attack, you can grab me with the death cap there. That'll be tons of fun. You know, I'll touch your fish. How does that sound? It's funny, Hubert doesn't look hungry at all. What's wrong, Hubert? You not feeling well? Ah, uh, should I just give up on that thing? Let's do it. Don't put it there for the death touch. And getting in the way of my... Let's just do this stuff. This looks lots of fun. Alright, all in. I was going to totally go all Axe Bane. This guy's got haste. But I'd love to be able to put him out and have him get super pumped at the same time. I 
I kind of get the impression his deck isn't coming together the way he'd hoped. He's picking up a lot of mana. He wants to put out those worms. One, two, three, four, five. You cast those things for three. Is that the deal? Don't be touching him. All right. You deserve to die at this point. I know, these guys have lack of trample, man. What are you going to do? You want to sacrifice your other dudes? You could do that. Ooh, landed up, huh? Ozlith's a great card for us in this situation. I think I'm at Gold Vein. A nice haste is a good way to finish a game off. He's not expecting that it'll be able to come out fast. Who can most have haste? I wouldn't think so. Let's check it out. Nope, just reach. Like a sucker. He's got a lot of mana left. What I really don't want is another dude. All right, all in, Sunny Jim. All right, so you got to take at least one of mine out and block all the rest of them. Oh, he gains five life. That's the suck. I'll just give it to Trampler. If you're going to block anybody, it'll be Sentinel of the Nameless City. You still got 10 coming on you. All right, come on, man. You got to make a decision. Is the problem that you're going to be giving up your entire strategy by allowing your dudes to die? You don't want to give up old Rutstein? You're going to die if you do that. You have to block one of my other guys. You have to. That's negative one. They call that death. Victory! All right, we're playing against Spoon. Spoon! I don't know why this deck always thinks two mana is the right way to go. I've yet to see it start without two mana. And there we go. Got a little a little action where people are getting stronger. 
Uh, why can't Because it requires three full green to be able to be played out. There's your pump. Dude, I will totally go for it. You're not going to stop me here. Uh, let's see. Let's just put out an evolving adaptive. Let's give pump to pump number pump. And let's go for land. I need land is the deal. And there we go. Suck it, sucker fish. I can't believe you gave up on it that early. Victory. All right, we are playing against Gifted Aetherborn. That's a name. Oh, it's Grifted Aetherborn. Okay, there we go. Entirely different. That guy sucks. Can't believe you just see you like a sucker because he's got a big old four butt right there. You can't go after my cards yet. No attacks. We have to sacrifice somebody to the tiny bones. Sweet googly people. You mono black, you mean like mono black likes the mono black. Alright, I could let tiny bones through at this point. Yeah, let's go block it. Block it, Suckerfish. Unfortunately, he's going to pop Concealing Curtains now. Question, as you can take out the Sentinel, and then I'll be just sucking it on fumes, not able to pull a fourth mana. Well, you don't want you don't want four mana. All right, so who's he taking out? I'd leave T, T Rex back if I were you. I'd go after yeah, the, uh, Axe Bane. Who cares about the Beast Caller? All right, man. Up! Kill! Right in the eyeball! Making all those great maps. Don't have any mana to use them, though. All right, so I could totally kick its booty. Let's just put this guy out. And that's it. All right, choose what you want to do. You're going to let it go. All right, fine, man. Let's see if I can pump up. And that was enough. Winner, winner, victory dinner. Rank up. 
Wow, we are playing against Kermit Sama. Kermit Sama. I only understand the word meat. All right, we got two, two, and a three. Ooh, we're not getting any man, are we? Because we're getting things we can play, so that's not bad. You guys are threes. This is money ball action. We just gotta plow through this, is what we gotta do. Alright, let's just go with what we got. You pick a dude you wanna die, I don't care. We'll trade off. Ah, I see, I should've put that earlier just to get that guy pumped. Well, next time, right? All right, I'm not worried about those guys killing and at least not trading off. There you go. Is that guy an artifact? He is, I could just take him out. All right, Annex Sentry, you are almost dead. That was great, because he's still going to be dead. He's going to be unalived here very shortly. Welcome back, Beast Caller. All right, if you want to take out the other canker bloom, feel free to do so. As long as your guys die, I'm totally cool with the trade off. Alright, do I care who I'm gonna pop here? No. Let's just let it go. Well, let's just let it go. I should have put it onto the beast collar, because then if he dies, I just move it across. You gonna give up one of your guys? Because you only got one. Your problem is, is that I am like the Russian forces. I have a billion dudes I can keep sending. Uh, okay. You got another three out. Good for you, baby. Look how strong he is. Let's see. All I gotta do is get this guy up by one. And then well, we can attack. That's it. Suck it! Victory! Alright, we are playing against Tanaka. Tanaka. Alright, I see our curve. Two gets us into a beast collar. Swing it in for two. Sentinel beefs everybody up. There we go. I mean, this is this is it. The whole deck right there. It did a fantastic early game. Now this thing is can we cinch it for mid game there. 
All right, we just need to pump some guys up and then strike for the hard hitting question. Let's put out our pal here. There we go. Beautiful. Anybody got tramp? I'll tell you, let's put her onto the beast caller and pass those tokens around. Yeah, he's gonna put something else on. I'll definitely want to kill it. He's down to two. No, we got him. We got him all together. All right, there we go. Boom, boom! Goes the room. All right, we are playing against Random Magnum. Random Magnum PI. One, two, three, four. Let's keep it. Not bad. All right, let's see. I kind of feel like I need to delay a little bit. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it out. He's probably just going to shoot it, but I got a guy there. You're not going to shoot it, huh? Good for you. I want to know what love is. That's how it feels right there. All right, we're good. All right, so pinned him down. He doesn't have a guy. He can put out this other guy, but he's kind of a wuss. And kill it straight up as well. What are you plotting there? Good. Gone. That's the cool thing about those decks. They're kind of heroic. They don't have very many creatures. They focus too much on their stuff. And if you kill their creatures off, they can't do anything. You got one mana, man. Oh, uh, let's see, let's see. Do I really want to let this guy through? He doesn't have haste. What does that matter then? One, two, three, four. And all in. All right, he's down to four. We got two guys with Vigilance, which is fantastic. We got another hasty dude on us. I don't think this guy's got it. He doesn't have haste. What are you going to do? No haste. Still no haste. Touchdown, Lava Bears. All right, so here we go. We've got uh, green, mono green. And uh, this is a rotation-proof deck, and I did very well. You know, the thing about it is it felt, it felt very much like I was playing uh, like a Moneyball green deck where everything is relatively cheap but has the condition to get stronger and stronger, and that goes a long way. I, and like I tell you, the two cards I thought were turd in my hands was Tyrannus Rex. Got the hiccups like a jerk. Tyrannus Rex and Murex. The big reason why is Tyrannus Rex was way too expensive. I never got up to seven mana. It was hard getting past three a lot of the times. But you can see you could play the vast majority of this deck with three mana. But uh, Tyrannus Rex, I could never get to it. That was a problem. And number two, the Murexes were bad, even though there was only two in the entire thing. But because this requires three green mana, this requires two. I found it hard sometimes when I'd only have three mana. And yet one of them would be the stupid Murex, and it would be in my stupid way. 
So I would almost say drop these two Mirixes and drop the T-Rexes and put some other cheap guys in there. Make this into a really good money ball deck and be on your merry way. But this is the way it came, so this is what we're playing today. All right, so let's just see who was this deck. Uh, who's the MVP? Who's the most valuable player? Um, I can say the, the guy that I actually ended up having the most fun with was Query and the Beast Caller. Because he kept, she kept getting bigger every single time somebody came out. So it just says whenever you cast a creature spell, it didn't have to hit the board or anything. Because uh, Evolving Adapted did very well as well. I liked it when you went Evolving Adapted into Query and Beast Caller. So that way it could be one becomes two twos. And then you put out something else and then they became three threes. By that point, he starts to kind of top out because these guys don't come out that strong. You have fours, right? That, maybe you could do that. So then you have... You could do three, 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 and then, you know, it could, but at that point, you've done two you know, points of damage, you four points of damage, but then that's been upgraded to maybe six points, which being on top of the two puts you at eight total. I mean, the thing just rolls quickly like a snowball down a hill. So all together, yeah, this was, uh, I'm going to, the guy I was looking at was Korean Beast Color. I'm sorry. He was my favorite card of this particular deck just because of his ability to keep gathering stuff. Normally, I'd say your value cards, like Axe, Bay, and Ferox were really good. Like I said, I had a hard time getting the four. A Haste, Ward, he doesn't have, but he doesn't have um, Trample. That was a big problem. Um, a lot of these guys don't have Trample, and that was said to be a problem. I think Railway Baller at five is probably the highest you'd ever want to put in here, and he would totally make this deck rock, except for the fact that it was like there's only two of them in here, and you can almost barely ever get to five. We don't have a lot of ramp in here, so yeah, three is pretty much the max that you're looking at. Everything after that is just wishful thinking. All right, so let's see. I'm going to go ahead and give it to the Query and Beast Caller. Let's talk about was this deck competitive. I ended up getting a 67% win rate out of it, so yes, it was a competitive deck. That It's a fantastic deck. I mean, did I lose a couple of times, but I won twice more than I, or two times more than I lost. So that's what makes it such a great deck. That's all you can really ever ask for, really, in my opinion. Yeah, no, it did well. The one card that totally shut me down at one point was um, Phyrexian Vindicator because I just couldn't do anything about it. Nothing at all. I couldn't touch it. I couldn't get rid of it. I couldn't ex exile it. Nothing. The only thing I could do is build out my own guys like super wide and then come in at one time. But this deck isn't quite fast enough for that. It comes in with three pretty well, but I'd have to come at, at them with like, like five or six guys at a time. And it just wasn't going to work out. So you got to watch out for that. There's just, there is some kryptonite that you can't handle. But uh, this thing's relatively fast. It's relatively strong. And uh, it's a great deck. Like I said, 67%. All right. Was this deck fun? Yes. Why is that? Because we had early game aggro. Look at all these ones and twos. You got lots of guys going on. Sure, I was saving the gold V and Hydra for later, but I'd play him for two. I'd do it. I'd come out with the one one if I had to. Because he dies, he gives you treasure, which you can help use to get in these other guys. Really, the death of a gold vein Hydra is what's going to propel you up into these upper levels, specifically for the Tyrannus Rex. Uh, yeah, Tyrannus Rex, yeah, exactly. All right, so but I think this is a fun deck. I This is totally up my back. It's no mono red, but still, it's a step down from that. All right, so was this deck interesting? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's mono green. Here's the deal. Nothing's interesting at this point. We're in the last... Like week before the rotation, we've been sucking on old sets for uh, forever. Man, we need the rotation so badly, and we're just playing decks that we played before. This one is rotation proof, and so that that's great. You know, it's a rotation proof version of Mono Green Money Ball. Like I said, there's a couple cards that aren't Money Ball. We should probably toss them, put something else in. But uh, I, I I dug it big time. I thought this was a decent deck for what it was. But I'm not going to go so far as to say that it was interesting. It's not like I haven't seen something like it before. I've been playing my own version of it. Um, but yeah, this one's been, like I said, pulled back to be rotation proof. So it is ready to go a week from now. And you can definitely add to it more, you know, light green creatures that, that you want to get in there. All right, so let's add this up. Was this deck competitive? Yes. Was this deck fun? Totes. Was this deck interesting? Eh, not so much. Let's just give this deck a solid A. A solid A. That's a good deck. And if you decide to play with this deck, I hope that you have as much fun with it as I did. That is all for now. 
If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. From all of us here in the secret underground headquarters of Uncommonly Good MTG, have a great day. In the words of my people, shine on, you crazy diamonds. Later.